Okay, so this is the question. It says, consider the circuit below. Uh, assume that the capacitor is initially uncharged. Good, I think we're gonna assume that anyway. And um, it looks like the way the circuit is built, um, yeah, so the switch will be closed at a particular time at t equals zero. So we have different kinds of circuits to consider. So at t equals zero, this is what we are going to have um, at t is equal to zero. And, um, and then using that as a starting point, we'll do the analysis. And I believe, um, yeah, there's a second part to the question. What happens if the switch is open after it's been closed for some time? So that would be the case. So here, at time equals, so this is for parts uh, A and B, for A and B, uh, at time equals zero, we start out with uh, the, uh, the amount of charge on the capacitor as being zero. Uh, we start out with the uncharged state. Now, later on, as we get to part C and D, um, yeah, in part C and D, uh, so we'll just reset the time so that we can refer to time equals zero as the starting point. It makes some of the math simpler. So for C and D, we are going to have this situation where at time equals zero, uh, the new time equals zero, we call the T prime, um, the amount of charge on the capacitor won't be zero anymore. It'll be, it'll start out with some initial amount of charge and we analyze based on that. So for parts C and D, where um, you open up the switch here, then, um, then you have this entire branch of the circuit containing the battery and one of the register, that's basically going to be inert. It won't be doing anything because with the open circuit here, no current will be flowing through that portion. So when we are analyzing for parts C and D, we are basically looking at this portion of the circuit because it's in this portion where currents will be flowing, something interesting will be happening. So, um, so with those two parts in mind, Let's uh, work through the question just in linear order. So we'll do A and B first. So while we are doing A and B, we don't need to worry about that. Here the, uh, we have the entire circuit. So we have two registers to worry about, R1 and R2, and the capacitor to worry about. Yeah. Let's see what. So in part A, it's asking, what is the initial current through register R2, when the switch is closed at t equals zero. Uh, there's a kind of a simplification that we can do. Um, and this is something that we did uh, touch on as we were doing chapter 10, um, analyzing circuit for transient responses. So when we are dealing with the transient responses, you, you are basically looking at two ends. Oh, I guess I'm calling both the transient response. One of them is transient. The other is technically the asymptotic response. We are either looking at, at time equals zero, where something interesting has happened, and we are um, trying to analyze it for that moment in time. And the other end is where uh, time goes to infinity. This would be the stable response, the technically asymptotic response. So at time equals zero, so we do this tangents to responses first because there are some simplifications you can make based on the properties of elements. So with the registers, well, their property is that they, co they cause a voltage difference whenever current flows through them. So voltage drop across a register is current times the resistance. And this happens immediately. There's no time dependence. That's why when we did the DC circuit with the registers alone, it wasn't a time dependent circuit. It gets more interesting with the capacitor. So uh, with the capacitor, I guess the way to state their property is 
um, their property, which comes from definition of capacitance, is a voltage change across a capacitor is given by amount of charge on the capacitor divided by the capacitance. Um, if you imagine flipping this expression around, you see the definition of capacitance. And, um, and what's important here, the accumulation of charge, this takes time. Um, in a fashion that's determined by the current through the capacitor being the time derivative of the amount of charge on the capacitor. So whenever you have a capacitor in the circuit and you are looking at the voltage difference across the capacitor, um, you can kind of have this, have this as a rule of thumb. You can't suddenly change the voltage across capacitor. That's just not allowed by the property of the capacitor because if you have a finite amount of current flowing through it, then it'll take some amount of time to change the amount of charge on the capacitor significantly in order to change the voltage across the capacitor. So with all this, the fact that you have zero charge on the capacitor at time equals zero means this, that you have at time equals zero, so the voltage drop across the capacitor at time equals zero is zero. Sometimes we say, um, this is a phrase that you might have heard, capacitors act as shorts. Um, I guess, uh, let me just finish the sentence so that it's not inaccurate. Short on transient response. And it's not fully correct because uh, you can have situations where you started by charging up the capacitor that it's more than a short, but um, what you can hold on to is that the voltage across the capacitor is directly proportional to the amount of charge and it'll take time to change that charge. Here, we start out with a we started out with a zero charge. So even right after you close the switch, for a brief moment, the charge will still be zero. So the voltage across the capacitor will still be zero. Uh, there will be no change in the voltage across the capacitor. All of this means is um, you see how the capacitor and this register R1 are connected in parallel. So all of this means is that Voltage drop across this register here. It's the same voltage drop across the capacitor. So you get a zero volt voltage drop across the register. And using this Ohm's law, you can immediately figure out without doing any uh, more complicated analysis that the current through here at time equals zero will be zero because there's no voltage difference across the register to drive the current. So this allows you to really simplify the circuit for a time equals zero. So let me redraw the circuit just to uh, marking the, the important elements. I have the battery that produces the voltage difference here. I have this wire coming out. I have this wire coming out that does go through the register R2. And we can treat this uh, capacitor like a wire. That's what we mean. It acts as, acts as short. So this entire portion of the uh, circuit here, at four time equals zero, I can replace that with a simple wire. And the circuit will behave the exact same way for that brief moment in time. So um, this looking at this some simple circuit, gives you a really simple answer. <laughs> the current through R2 at time equals zero is simply the voltage of the battery divided by R2. That's it. Um, you know, when you are, as you are working out the numbers, watch out the prefixes from kilo to milli. Uh, they kind of magically work out, but you know, to work through it, make sure to uh, convince yourself that you got the correct answer. But that's it, at time equals zero, uh, that's the answer. And I think we might have actually done this um, earlier because <laughs> we did do transient responses when we were doing chapter 10 initially. So now the 
Part B asks for the asymptotic response. Uh, this is where at, as time goes to infinity, as everything settles down, as, um, as no, there's no, um, there's no, so actually, so when we say it's a stationary, stable, that actually gives a bit of an information right away because we describe the current through the capacitor as being this time derivative. So what it tells you is that current through the capacitor will be zero as time goes to infinity. So at some very um, long time after the switch is closed, when everything that's going to change has changed, things are settled down, then what you, should, what you can say is the current that's going through this branch here, that'll be zero. You can immediately say that. Now, because the capacitor is no register, that doesn't tell you what the voltage is. To figure out the voltage, you actually need the amount of charge on it. And, um, and maybe we have enough information, maybe we don't. Um, but I want to look at another part of the circuit to figure that out. Because if we, um, so, so, so if we can say the, uh, so, you know, getting rid of this, which is, which no longer applies, we can take this statement that I said about the transient response and um, kind of replace it. So capacitors uh, don't act as uh, short anymore. Um, so on the, on the asymptotic response, on the asymptotic or on the stable response after a long time, capacitors don't act as a short, they act as open circuit. So they act as though this part of the circuit is just uh, broken. The connection is broken. No current can flow through it, exactly as we say here. And that's uh, how they can be replaced. So the, the idea here is uh, replacing it. So we can imagine redrawing the circuit to form a more equivalent circuit that applies to our situation in part B. So the circuit for part B would look like, okay, I have this battery. So I go here and at this junction, everything to the right of this junction, no current flows through it. It's an open circuit. So I can kind of ignore that part and just go directly down here. Because any current that's going to flow has to flow through um, this portion of the circuit. So we say, all right, uh, I have register R1. And on the bottom half of the circuit, I still have a register R2, which isn't really all that affected by what's happening with the capacitor. So, so that's the circuit. We have a series of circuit of two registers in series. So, um, so, um, and, oh, so I, I guess uh, for me to get current through um, R2, still the same register. I just need to figure out, okay, what's the current through this entire circuit? And I have two registers in series. The equivalent resistance is pretty simple to get, R1 plus R2. So we can say the current through this segment of the circuit is given by Ohm's law. Uh, apply the voltage divided by R1 plus R2. Um, and I think, you know, for a later question, I need to figure out uh, what charge this charge is up to, but I'll do that when it comes up later. In terms of current, it's quite simple. And I think that we did do this when we were back in chapter 10. We're just redoing it as a reminder. Um, okay, so let's answer part C. So for part C, let me just uh, um, erase some of the drawings so that it's not so um, busy. Because uh, as I was saying before, between part A, B, and part C and D, um, we're just totally changing the circuit. So let me just uh, get rid of some of these uh, transient and asymptotic response stuff. And, and really the, por and uh, let me erase this as well. The portion of the circuit that will become relevant as we open the switch back up 
at mu time equals zero will be this portion of the circuit because everything is connected here. But so if we are looking at any current that might go this way, we are forced to say, oh, the current there is zero because the circuit here will be open. So, um, so we kind of ignore the, all the other stuff that's connected at this end because they don't do anything. Our circuit that we are looking at really is um, on this right hand side, which forms a nice series of circuit between a capacitor and a single register. So that's what we are dealing with. So, um, so we are being asked, what happens? Oh, um, and yeah, the important to note that the capacitor starts out charged with some amount of charge that uh, we might need to figure out in a little bit. So it asks, what happens if the switch is opened after it's been closed for some time? Okay. Um, so after it's been closed for some time, so at time equals zero, so th this is the kind of implications that you need to work through. Um, we are still working through this uh, definition of capacitance. So at time equals zero, you have some charge Q naught, which is not zero, which means there must be some voltage difference across the capacitor, which is not zero. And that exact same voltage difference will be the voltage difference across this uh, register because their two ends are connected together. So there is some voltage difference that's equal in amount as voltage difference across the charged capacitor. Now, this is where I go back to the Ohm's law. Ohm's law says if there's a voltage difference, that's going to drive a current. So there will be current through R1. But um, there can't be any current through R2 because of this open circuit here. So let's look for a choice that says that. Um, so that's not correct. Current does flow. Ah through R1 and C1, but not R2. Okay, that sounds right. So I think that this is gonna be our answer. Um, yeah, the rest of the combinations are, so no current through R2 is the important one, and the others kind of fail. Um, and current through R1 is also important. So yeah, uh, so, and it's important that current flows through a uh, capacitor as well. This is what allows you to say that the current through the whole thing is the what, we would describe as current through the capacitor given by the time derivative of the amount of charge on the capacitor. Okay, let's keep going. It says, um, if the switch has been closed for a time, here's long enough for the capacitor to become fully charged, um, then the switch is opened, how long before the current through the register R1, which is half of its initial value? Oh, that's a lot easier than I thought. So, because it's asking for the asking the question in terms of uh, which is half of its initial value, and we don't really have to tell you the initial value. Um, I don't have to analyze this circuit as I was fearing I might have to. So let me read through the circuit that we do have to analyze. Um, so that's my register R one. And this is my capacitor, C1. And what's really important here is that this capacitor started out with some charge on the, on the thing. And we don't really have to know what this exact amount is uh, because our answer will be relative to this initial value. So this is where, um, um, I, I guess you could work this out from scratch. So if you have some formulas memorized about the amount of charge on the capacitor, then that's fine. You can definitely do that. But let me just solve it through. I, I don't think it'll take all that long. So to solve this circuit, we use uh, Kirchhoff's uh, rules. And uh, we don't really need the junction rule because in this simplified circuit, there are no junctions to speak of. So we are really working with the Kirchhoff's uh, loop rule. And for the loop rule, so we are just starting from one end here, imagine going across the thing. And actually, let me try to draw, be a little bit careful in the direction. Let me, I'll start from here and then go this way. Because uh, I 
kind of have a sense this being the positive end, current will flow in this direction. So as a, and I'm going from the negatively charged to the positive charged plate. So as I go across this way, I'll collect some positive change of voltage that follows from the, the definition of capacitance. Q over C, uh, or voltage across capacitor is Q over C. So plus Q as a function of time over C. Um, and then as I go across the register, minus I R is equal to, oh, I, so after I go across the register and come back, I've completed the loop. So the loop rule says that this should add up to zero. And if you're looking at it, stare at it, and think, oh, past, uh, the Q is unknown and current is unknown, you have two uh, equations, then this is where this comes in. The amount of current through the circuit is given by this expression for the current through a capacitor. So I can plug that in to say that my um, Kirchhoff's loop rule that tells me how the charge on the capacitor changes is Q over C minus R times DQ dt is equal to zero. And I guess the last time I did this um, on Sage Math, and um, you can, it's perfectly fine for you to do that. Uh, let me just do this by hand. I think uh, if I don't talk too much, I can just do it relatively quickly. So, um, so let me solve this. First for dq dt, this is the kind of standard procedure in solving ordinary differential equation. You solve it for the highest order derivative. dq dt is equal to, I um, think, 1 over rc times q. If you need to, pause the video. Make sure I didn't make algebra mistakes. And I do something called the separation of variables. And what that is, is I treat this like a fraction. So I put dq on one side, dt on the other side, treating it like a fraction. I know it's not, but just how the notation works out. Um, and I put all the quantities dealing with the q on the same side as dq, and all the other quantities on the sides, um, or all the quantities dealing with the t, or not with the q, on the other side. So one way you can do that is by putting, um, um, Q on the left-hand side, so I have DQ over Q on the left-hand side, and DT on the right-hand side, so I have 1 over RC times DT on the right-hand side. And, um, oh, I made a sign error. Let me, uh, before I go too far, let me fix that. Um, so this is the source of sign error. When I say current through the capacitor is this, it, I'm really talking about the magnitude. So um, in an equation like this where the sign matters, uh, you have to be careful with the sign. So just to remind yourself, this is always either plus or minus. And for each situation, you have to kind of work through. Uh, the, for this physical setup, does positive sign make sense or does negative sign make sense? So I'm looking at it, thinking it through. At time equals zero, I start out with some charge and it's going to be decreasing in charge. The charge will be going down. And so dq dt is negative. And as I have negative dq dt, I want a positive current to flow. At least that's the only way this expression here will make sense. So instead of saying i is equal to dq dt, I really needed to say i is equal to minus dq dt. So with that minus sign there, this should be plus. So with the plus sign there, there should be a minus sign here. Um, and there should be a minus sign here. Okay, now everything looks good. So with that, uh, I can, so the final step in solving this is uh, doing the integration. So I like to do this as a definite integral from some initial charge to some final charge that I'll deal with from some initial time t equals zero to some final time that I'll be dealing with. So um, you have to know how to do integral like that. Left-hand side is one over x. So this is one of the things you learn in either math 3a or 3b. 
that uh, integral of 1 over x gives you natural log. So you should have natural log of, um, well, natural log, log of q evaluated from uh, q is equal to q naught to the final value q prime. That's equal to the right hand side. Um, it's just a co constant coefficient. So the antiderivative there is minus t over rc evaluated from t equals zero to some final value. So plug those in. Go through the logarithm algebra uh, on the left hand side. Then you have ln q prime minus ln q naught. You can combine those two terms with by turning into ratio, look up logarithm algebra, if this doesn't sound familiar. And the end result is the natural log of Q prime over Q naught is equal to the right hand side minus T prime over RC. Um, our goal is to solve for Q prime. So I can do that by raising the entire expression to the power of E, the exponential of e and the natural log they cancel each other out so for the left hand side i get q prime over q naught for the right hand side i get exponential of minus t prime over rc so here r and c are the r1 and c1 just to make sure i didn't miss that in the notation so i think i can actually leave the left hand side like this because the question we are being asked to is in terms of the initial value. So I have Q prime over Q naught. So where it asks, you know, how long before the current through the register R1? Uh, I guess, so it's a technically asking about the current, but um, through this relationship here, you know that whenever the amount of charge on the capacitor goes down to half its initial value, then the current will also go down to half its initial value. They are all connected that way. So I can just uh, look at this expression. And when we are talking about the current going to half its initial value, that means the charge going to half its initial value. So what we are talking about is left-hand side becoming one half. So you have this expression solve it for t prime and we are done and uh, i'm just going to do that algebra quickly in my head and when i'm done <laughs> this is what i have um, so t prime is equal to the or the time at which the, the this fraction reaches one half is equal to uh, minus rc times natural log of one over two and uh, let me leave the expression that way. Now, this minus sign might cause you, uh, if it cause, causes you a concern, uh, let me give you this reassurance. Because I'm taking natural log of a number less than one, this quantity will be negative. So the overall expression is actually positive. I could absorb it into the thing, but since I'm gonna get a numerical answer, let me just uh, plug in the numbers. Let me use this as my calculator to just plug in the numbers. Um, <laughs> minus times uh, the resistance of uh, 10 kilo ohm, 10 E3 ohm times uh, the resistance uh, 10 microfarad, 10 E minus 6 farad times natural log. Well, I hope that's a function um, of 0.5. Ah, there it is. And as I was saying, I get a positive answer. Uh, that's the answer in seconds. I want something in milliseconds. So let me multiply that by... I wish I know how to... Why do it this way? No, it doesn't. Uh, I, I gotta look up how to refer to the previous output. Okay, so in milliseconds, it should be 69.3 milliseconds. Let me type that in to just make sure I got that right. And there you go. <laughs> yeah, so, so that's it. It's a, uh, um, it, it's a, uh, um, well, it, it's a time dependent circuit question. <laughs>
Um, and as I was uh, saying, uh, this uh, form of the question, it can be asked with a uh, uh, register and capacitor circuit. You can also ask a very similar question using a uh, register and inductor. And I think one of the questions is doing exactly that, uh, not question one. Uh, yeah, question three, which I had done before, which is why. Uh, before I just chose to do <laughs> question three and not question two, but now here it is.